I love video games, and if you're watching this, you too probably enjoy video games to some degree or another. It's a medium that has its hands in so many themes, styles, and I guess platforms, that it's no wonder why it's become such a massive industry over the years. Huge titles like Call of Duty are pretty much universally recognized, even by those who don't play video games for one reason or another. Hell, show this thing to anyone with a pulse, they'll know exactly what it is. From some of the arcade classics of Pac-Man, Galaga, and Donkey Kong, to the huge blockbuster million dollar hits of today, like The Last of Us, Grand Theft Auto, and Skyrim, gaming has become massive. But for all these massive AAA titles, there are the indie games, that have also seemingly become much more popular and preferred by some over the years. And personally, I've kind of shared a similar sentiment. I tend to not look at or discriminate between games for being AAA or indie, as I'd rather look at the game itself for what it is as the developers intended it. I of course do look into developers and the developmental history for some games if I'm curious, especially for videos, but when it comes to games, a good game is a good game, and should be enjoyed by anyone who enjoys playing it. And with an industry as massive as the game industry, it'd be kind of overwhelming when it comes to finding and picking out new games that you like or discovering new titles, and as a developer, it can be even harder to get your game into the eyes of your audience. This is where Steam Next Fest rolls around. I discovered that Steam does this a few months ago, where I played Neon White and made a video on it. For those who aren't equated with it, allow me to explain. Steam Next Fest is a full week dedicated to showing off up and coming titles where developers put out playable demos of their games for the public to download and try. There's even dedicated live streams for people playing the different games for people to tune in and take a look at some of these new titles. There's tons of games available to test, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to play all of them, so I downloaded a bunch of games, played their demos, and organize this video that you're watching right now to talk about all the ones that I played and piqued my interest, and some may even be worth for you all to keep on your radar. Wait, hold on there. Are you not subscribed? Well, if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and joining the community. Over 70% of viewers aren't subscribed, and I'd hate for all those viewers to not get their cookie and not be notified whenever I have another banger hot out of the oven. And if you are subscribed, ring that bell to know when more bangers are coming. Now, before we get started, uh, here's a little housekeeping. Since we have quite a few games to bring up and talk about, I'll be trying to be as concise and straightforward with some of these so I can make sure to get to everything. I'll be including links to all of these games in the description, as some of them still have their demos still available to play. I'll make sure to mention which ones are available and which ones aren't. I also want to kick things off with a few honorable mentions that I think still deserve some attention. Glimmer and Mirror, Detained, Too Good for School, Spark the Electric Jester 3, Lone Ruin, Elsie, Backroom's Exploration, and Angerfoot. All these game demos I played and enjoyed my time with, but for one reason or another, they just couldn't pull me in. Now, let's jump into our first game. Metal Hell Singer is a rhythm-based FPS being developed by The Outsiders a team of developers with an FPS background that have come together to create this game. In fact, the game is said to be the passion project of David Goldfarb, who was the lead designer and game director of Battlefield 3, Battlefield Bad Company, Battlefield Bad Company 2, and Payday 2. To some, a rhythm FPS sounds a bit out there, and the fact that there aren't that many may attribute to this. With a bit of digging around, I only found four of them, two of which are not fully released, Metal Hellslinger of course being one of them, with Gun Jam being the other. The ones that are available are Pistol Whip, which is a VR rhythm FPS, and BPM, Bullets Per Minute, which is what technically started the rhythm FPS genre. Pistol Whip did come out before BPM, but with it being a VR game, it's designed much differently than how other rhythm FPS games are being developed, which all seem to be taking more pages out of BPM's book. BPM also heralds itself as the original rhythm FPS, and honestly, yeah. I, I'd give it that title too. And back to Metal Hellsinger, this game I knew was going to be part of Steam Next Fest June, and was anticipating the moment I'd get a chance to play it. You play as the Unknown, a being that is half human, half demon, and is seeking vengeance against the Red Judge. The only thing stopping you are the demons of hell and their leaders, but with your massive arsenal of melee and ranged weapons, you'll rip and tear through the hordes to the beat of the game's heavy metal soundtrack. Everything you do is time to the beat. Reloading, shooting, dashing, executing, and etc. 
time things better to get your score multiplier up. Being able to keep it up at time 16 will cue the vocals for the background music. And at this point, you should all know now that I love a kick-ass soundtrack, and this one does not disappoint. Metal Hellsinger has an all-original metal soundtrack that calls upon the aid of different icons of the genre for its vocals. Since I only got to play two stages of the game, I only got to hear so much. But what I was able to experience was fantastic, and based on the trailers, it's only going to get better. Playing this demo made me so excited for the full game that I had to play BPM and experience the OG Rhythm FPS in all of its glory, and I could see some of the inspirations from BPM in Hellsinger. Overall, I'm excited, and if you want to, this game's demo is still available for all to play, as the game releases on September 15th of this year. Alright, next up we have... Master Key is an adventure game being developed by Chromie, a single dev team whose inspiration goes back to the original Zelda. I'm gonna waste no time on this one. I love this game. This game is a fantastic love letter to the games of the past. Literally, boot it up, grab a big ass key, explore. That's it. That's all the game does for you. It's up to you, the player, to make your journey through the world. Discovering things, figuring out how things work, getting new upgrades and items, finding dungeons and solving puzzles are all a part of this one-bit package. I doubt a lot, I'll be honest, but not even death kept me from exploring and enjoying this world. I was ecstatic when I found a hidden dungeon and solved its puzzle to get the chest. The joy of finding new things in this world felt amazing as I'd be grabbing more coins or a new item that I can use and I would never know what I'd find in the next chest or dungeon. It was the same kind of joy I had back when I used to play games as a kid, where I'd be so invested in crafting my story and my journey. I wanted to keep playing and keep exploring, but of course, after a few hours, I realized I had a lot more games to play, so I wound up moving along. At the end of it, I love this game, and I can't recommend it enough. Its demo is still available, so if you have some time, definitely give this little gem a try. Moving along, our next game is... Cult of the Lamb. The most played demo of Steam Next Fest June is a devilishly charming action roguelike that is being developed by Massive Monster Games. I wasn't aware that this game was getting a demo for Steam Next Fest June, but I was greatly aware of this game's existence and I've been patiently waiting for a chance to play it, and here we are. Surprise, surprise! A hand drawn game that Cross is excited for! Sound the alarm! Ring, ring, ring the bells! Summon the demons from the great beyond. In Cult of the Lamb, you'll be playing as a little lamb who was spared from death by a demonic entity, but in turn, you are tasked with creating a cult for that very being. With your newfound demonic powers and growing cult of worshippers, you go forth seeking revenge upon the bishops that sought out the execution of you and the rest of your kin. The gameplay is basically split up into two sections, the sort of base building and management side and the action combat side which includes the roguelike elements. They both play off of each other, as you need more followers and good standings to unlock certain paths and discover more things for future runs, and while you're in your runs, you can get more resources, newer followers, blueprints, and such to help out your ever-growing cult. Both sides of the gameplay system exist hand in hand and work really well with one another, which was honestly one of my biggest worries about the game, but I'm glad that my worries have been put to rest. The controls are tight, the weapons and abilities feel good to use, the game looks great, and guess what? We got a slamming OST on our hands here. I'm excited to get my hands in the full game on August 11th of this year, and to those who want to try it out, the demo is still available on the game Steam page. Alrighty, next up we have... If you're a fan of rhythm games, specifically Rhythm Heaven, you're absolutely going to fall in love with Melatonin. Melatonin is a beautifully stylized and hand-drawn rhythm game being developed by Half Asleep. The basis for the game involves a player engaging in different rhythm games themed to different dreams. Things like shopping, food, video games, and social media are some of the things the levels are based off of. And when looking at the trailer, there's going to be plenty more levels and themes to go alongside these. Each level comes with its own unique minigame and music with two different difficulties and the ability to practice the level as well. Once you feel like you've mastered all the minigames, there's a level that combines them all in a unique song and a sort of relay, giving you minigame after minigame, challenging you to keep up as it speeds ahead. 
And one of the biggest things I noticed when looking at the game, besides its fantastic visuals and music, was that it felt very beginner friendly. Before you even get to start jumping into the game, it gives you a rundown on how the game works and guides you through an interactive tutorial to ease you in. There's even the ability to turn on assist options which will aid those who may struggle with the timing and difficulty, giving accessibility to a wider variety of players who may want to play. This is a fantastic approach in my opinion, as it gives players that aren't adept in rhythm games or recognizing beats the ability to enjoy it, and eventually work their way up to play without extra guidance if they so choose. Player choice, it goes a long way. Now, the game looks good, sure as hell sounds good, but how does it play? I actually really like this game. It plays really well and is overall a solid rhythm game that I could easily recommend. And with its demo still available, you can go ahead and give it a try too, or wait until it releases on September 16th of this year. All right, the next game on our list is Deadlink was another game that I was really excited to try during the Steam Next Fest. I had randomly run across a dev team's Twitter page and found out the upcoming demo, so I made sure to keep it on my radar. It's a fast-paced, roguelike FPS with cyberpunk theming being developed by Grubby Entertainment and actually has the same publisher as Deflector. You play as a covert operative who pilots a bioshell in a simulation of the streets of the city, taking on room after room of different grunts, grabbing upgrades for your bioshell until you reach the boss. It's the standard idea for roguelikes, incentivizing you to continue playing, but I personally really like how it plays as it feels fluid and smooth with grappling hooks, rocket momentum jumping, bounce pads, weapon swapping, and more. It takes all the great movement, tight shooting, and one-to-one -one high octane gameplay moments from the movement shooter genre and fuse it with roguelike elements with a coat of cyberpunk theming to create an experience that I just couldn't get enough of on my first playthrough. The game is quite difficult at that, with elemental damage types, a system revolving around executing marked enemies to stay topped off with ammo and shields, many different enemy types, random objectives, and all of this on top of mastering the game's movement? Yeah, I think things can get quite difficult. But for those who can master these things, they'll be tearing through the streets of this game's great looking cyberpunk world to a fitting banger soundtrack. This is also a game that I really want you all to get a chance to try, but unfortunately the game doesn't have its demo currently available, with no announced release date. So if you want to keep up with the news and development, I'll put in the game's Twitter link in the description as well. Alright, moving on we have... Goodbye World is a narrative-centered game being developed by YoFuji, who had developed two other games that are available on their Ichio site. I'm not too familiar with this developer or their other works, even after digging around and trying to figure them out with a bit of research into them. The biggest thing I wanted to find out was if it was a single developer or a team of developers, and I think, do not quote me, that it's just a single developer based on what I found on their Twitter and other sites. Developer aside, I'm emotionally invested into this game already. From just the first two to three chapters that the demo allows you to play, of the 12 to 13 total chapters, the final version, the developer was able to grab me by the collar and pull me in close to be emotionally attached to this game's story and its characters. This is mostly because of how I feel some relation towards the main characters and what they're going through. Goodbye World has you follow the story of Connie and Kamade, two individuals who meet in college and decide to try and develop games with one another when they graduate but life is some hard as things don't go quite as planned for their game development ventures. When it comes to the gameplay, the game chooses to break up these narrative moments with small puzzle platformer levels of a game called Blocks, which it alone is a genuinely cute little platformer. It's a unique way of breaking up the one-to-one -one narrative moments, and it even fits the overall theme of the rest of the game. I'm sure that it'll play more story significance later on and possibly involve some smaller details or symbolism to the story, but one thing's for sure. I'll definitely be getting and playing this game when it releases, and thankfully the demo is still available for you all to try so you can experience what I'm talking about for his hand. Alright, the next game on our list is... There Is No Light is a 2D Souls-like being developed by Zellart, and it honestly surprised me with how much I enjoyed it. I had finished my load of demos and had a bit of extra time before Steam Next Fest June ended, so I began looking around for any extra demos to play and decided to give this one a try on just a whim. You play as the hero, an individual who had survived a raid on his camp of individuals who had attempted to escape the capital 
its practices, and their leaders. Being the only surviving member of his camp, with his wife and unborn child being kidnapped to be sacrificed to a being called the Hand, the hero is filled with rage and dons a lead pipe to begin chasing down the perpetrators, killing all those who step in his path. While progressing forth, you encounter and are saved by a being that seems to transcend that of death with immense power, and it grants you the ability to also triumph over death yourself with a bit of extra power to complete your goals. He seems to only aid you for the fact that your goals loosely line up, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he would end up dropping you if you show that you aren't capable of completing his goal. This aside, I want to spend most of this section talking about the style of the game before we dive into quickly breaking down the gameplay. First off, the game looks fantastic. Its character models are well designed, and the backgrounds are stunning, well detailed and varied, and its animation is smooth and eye-catching. The art style all carries a sort of dark undertone that carries unease with it, as it adds these bits of minute details to things like enemies, characters, and backgrounds, enhancing their already strange and disturbing looking designs. The game also chooses not to explain everything to you, and puts things in front of you that are eye-catching or out of sorts to get you to start asking questions, and the backgrounds easily help in accentuating this. For example, at the beginning of the game, the tones felt very medieval with the camp, with its lack of technology and enemies wearing knight-like armor. But as soon as I progressed out of the camp, I immediately found myself in what felt like an abandoned subway, and my mind began racing with intrigue. Leaving this unexplained is genius for storytelling, as it gets players to want to explore more and play to figure out the answers to the questions they are developing. Of course, if it's overdone, this can be a bad thing, but it felt as if it did just enough to keep me from feeling detached from everything that was going on. With that, the game never fully stopped to explain itself, it just let the background speak for itself, and dialogue speak for more minute details to aid the backgrounds. When seeing these large structures, candles, trees, and more all around, and not having a full understanding of why they are there, or even what they are made of, is enough to get you thinking. And through dialogue and backgrounds, the player can figure out that all these things are made of wax, and that people are given rations of wax for light in their day to day. With this newfound information, juxtaposed with the modern settings and backgrounds, the player can then begin to assume that something must have occurred to basically remove all elements and traces of electricity and sources of power, leaving the populace to have to resort to using wax for their light, their heat, and etc. There's so much more I want to talk about with this game, but let's move on to breaking out the gameplay. There Is No Light is a top-down action game where you aim your cursor to attack in a specific direction. Attacking an enemy with a red indicator interrupts their attack. But if they have a yellow indicator, they can only be interrupted by a special attack. Hitting an enemy enough times will charge up said special attack, and killing enemies with it a certain amount of times will also drop a healing crystal, incentivizing you to execute enemies with your special attacks to keep yourself topped up with healing. It becomes this flow of either waiting to execute an enemy with your special attack, or save it to interrupt the enemy's attack, or simply use it to get a boatload of damage off on your target. There's also two other weapons in your arsenal, each with their own unique ability and special attack a fast-hitting set of gauntlets, and a slow, heavy-hitting electric greatsword, and each feels great to use. The combat and its controls felt odd at first, but once I began to understand the flow of things, it really began to take off from there. I found myself even trying to figure out combos and best weapon attacks and combinations for dispatching different enemies. Overall, There Is No Light is a solid game, and one that I'd love to pick apart in a video essay in the future if people are interested. The demo isn't currently available to play anymore, but it seems the game will be coming out in September this year, so the wait for it shouldn't be too long. Alright, the next game on our list is... Potion Permit is a cute life sim game being developed by Mass Hive Media. You play as the Alchemist, a representative from the medical division of the capital who has been requested to come to the small town of Moonberry in hopes of you being able to help the mayor's newly ill daughter. The caveat is that the reputation of the capital is quite poor in Moonberry, and the previous alchemists had harbored so much of the ecosystem and acted in such a poor way that the residents of Moonberry refused to let the capital instate a medical branch within their city. This sentiment changes once the mayor's daughter has been unable to recover from her illness, even with their local witch doctor doing all he can. Of course, once you prove yourself, the town's opinions on you will change slightly, and over time will either worsen or improve, depending on how well you do your job and help around the town. And since you're now essentially the new medical expert on the block, it's up to you to help all those who fall ill. But how do you do this? With potions, of course. You're an alchemist at the end of the day. Through diagnosis and material gathering, you'll be able to craft a selection of potions to sell and use in your medical practices. Aside from doing your medical practices, there's many other things tied to the gameplay that you'll find yourself doing. 
decorate your home, interact with the residents of Moonberry, take on other quests with part-time work, explore the forest and fill your glossary, and more. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of games like Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley, but this game was genuinely a ton of fun and has made its way onto my wishlist on Steam. If you're a fan of live sim games, like the ones I previously mentioned, Potion Permit is definitely worth looking into, and what better way than doing that than playing the game's demo, which is of course still available to play. Alrighty, two more to go. Let's go ahead and take a look at... Nyad is a beautiful puzzle adventure game being developed by High Warp. You play as the guardian of the river, a being in charge of keeping order and aiding the plants and animals along the river. This includes finding and reuniting lost ducks, guiding frogs to lily pads, finding and helping fish make their way upstream, helping plants bloom, and more. The game takes a sort of relaxed approach when it comes to its puzzles, as it doesn't really give you any prompts or markers, and instead allows the player to experiment and solve said puzzles on their own. I only ever got prompts for a few pieces of story when I completed a puzzle and system tutorials, but overall the game just lets go and sets you off to enjoy this beautifully crafted experience. In fact, it's so relaxed in its approach that solving these puzzles and such aren't mandatory. It doesn't penalize you for not completing all the objectives, it doesn't give you checklists to do, and you could just move on to the next area if you wanted to. It's a fantastic approach, especially for games that wish to provide a specific experience for the player, rather than just simply being an interactive medium. And the developers have definitely succeeded so far, as its beautiful visuals, amazing sound design, and enchanting soundtrack kept me thinking about this game long after I played the demo. Not only will I be getting the game, but I'll be definitely getting the soundtrack for it as well, that's for sure. Its demo is still available to play, so if it interests you, please look into playing it when you have some free time. I'd also recommend playing it alone and with headphones, as it definitely enhanced the experience for me. Alrighty, last game on our list, but that doesn't mean this one isn't a banger. Power Chord is a roguelike deck builder being developed by Big Blue Bubble. If you watch my video talking about Deflector and have nice death, then you'd know that I wasn't hooked into playing Slay the Spire, which is basically THE game that people think of when they hear roguelike deck builder. And who can blame them? It's a fantastic game with a fantastic community, keeping it afloat years after it received its last content and adjustment patch. But as I mentioned before, the game sadly didn't keep me around as much as I had hoped it would which is why I was so surprised when Power Core had hooked me in. In fact, I'd played through this demo multiple times. Its visual style and music is what pulled me in, but I stayed for its gameplay, plus style and its music. Upon quick glance, many would just chalk this up as a Slay the Spire clone, but it deserves so much more than that. Sure, it's a deck builder where you progress down paths, taking down enemies in combat where cards cost energy, building up a deck with cards that suit your build, grabbing relics, and etc until you reach the boss of that section and rinse and repeat until you reach the end. But this is where the similarities end. First off, instead of having a single character and creating a deck of cards around that said character, you now have a party of four characters with a deck made of their combined cards. Each character has a unique set of cards that you'll start with and find, as well as a unique starting relic that plays into that character's role. Each character felt distinct in not only their design, but the way they fulfill their role. For example, Stitch and Asher Odd are both supports, but Asherod has cards and relics centered on saving energy, drawing, and status effects, while Stitch has more party buffs and direct healing in her kit. Unfortunately, the other unlockable characters aren't available in this demo, but for what I can read on them, they play quite differently from their other role counterparts. Besides the game's party-centered gameplay, it continues to differ in its gameplay mechanics, such as armor, barriers, stances, debuffs, and buffs, and etc. Short and sweet, I want this game and it will be continuing to follow closely with its development as it has huge potential for what it is. I can imagine so many different character ideas for this game, and if the developers continue to support this game after its release, I can easily see it becoming a pretty big roguelike in the deck builder genre. The only criticisms I have are very few, personal, and easily adjustable. I'd first really like to see more random event spots in the map, as it felt like there were very few of them. I'd also like to be able to view the map while I'm in battle, so I could sit out and plan my route, and I'd personally love the idea of being able to use any of the characters in whatever combination I'd like. At this point in time, you can only have one character from each role, as each character is designed specifically around filling said role, 
so it makes sense from a design perspective to have it be one character from each role in your party. And that's pretty much it. So definitely keep this one on your radar if you're a fan of deck building roguelikes, and give its demo a play if you can as it's still available. And since the release date is unfortunately still unknown, I'll be sure as hell playing the demo myself. And those are my top picks from Steam Next Fest June. There were tons of games this time around, and I'm sure I missed out on trying some absolute gems, but what I got to play was well varied and gave me new titles to add to my wishlist. And I hope that it was able to help you find some new titles to possibly get excited for and possibly add to your own wishlist. And if there's a game from this list that you want to see me cover when it fully releases, let me know down in the comments. And if there's enough folks wanting me to cover something, you best believe I will. If you enjoyed this week's video, please consider supporting the channel by hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button, and ringing the bell. It really does help me out as I'm trying really hard to give you guys banger after banger, and I'd hate for you to miss them when they're hot out of the oven. If you want to keep up with the channel with video updates, consider following me on Twitter and Instagram, as I try to post regularly with updates on all the content. And as usual, my name is Crossfee, and I hope to see you all next time. Peace.